Hey y'all, I'm back. I hope you guys are enjoying your first couple days of spring. I'm filming today because I wanted to run back a new anime show I just finished. It's actually not new. It was filmed in 1997, so it's getting close to being almost 30 years old. Whew. And it is called Revolutionary Girl Utena. It was co-created by a man named Kumiko Ikuhara, and he also co-created Sailor Moon, so you can definitely see the similarities, but Utena, she's got her own flavor, and I really love the show. The show is called a shoujo, or is categorized as a shoujo, which is an anime that is primarily directed towards women. I thought that that meant that it was like a soap opera, but it doesn't. But I mean, that's what it was. It was a soap opera. So the cartoon is drawn with a really light, really whimsical hand. All the characters are really beautiful, but the subject matter is dark. They have some heavy topics on there that they tackled. So I watched it and I ended up really loving it. So let's get into it. When the show begins, it is really nothing like the way that it ends up which is a good thing. Um, it's separated into three or four different arcs as opposed to seasons. There's only about 39 episodes, but trust me, with this story, that was enough. It's only a small group of main characters, and which is the Student Council of Otori Academy. And everything about the Academy is different. Everything about the Student Council is different, and you get to see why as the arcs progress. It is not a regular show. So Utena Tenjo is the protagonist and main character of the show. She's a tomboy. She prefers to dress in men's clothes instead of the regular girl's uniform. And that's because she partially wants to be a prince. She lost her parents very young and wanted to go with them. But a prince saved her and convinced her to live. So not only does she fall for him and look for him over the course of her life, she also wants to be a prince herself. This is what leads to her dueling over and winning the hand of Anthe the Rose Bride. This is Anthe Himamiya. She's a keeper of the Rose Garden, resident shy girl, and the Rose Bride. She can't be a princess because she's her brother's keeper, so instead she has to be a witch who keeps a sword of Dios and all his secrets inside her. She's very sweet and obedient, but she's also passive aggressive and mysterious. Girl, Anthe is a trip. This brings us to her brother, Prince Dios. Dios is actually her brother, Akio. Same person, different sides. The good side of Dios died when he and Anthe were young and Akio was left. Akio's good looking, lost in his own delusions, and destructive of everybody in his mythical academy, which I personally think is purgatory. He's the puppet master and everybody else is on the strings until they learn how to free themselves, or I guess revolutionize themselves. The relationship between Anthe and Utena was really a slow burn and it was actually pretty realistic because it took a lot of time and development for them to get as close as they eventually got. Um, I enjoyed their relationship because they both had what the other needed. Like Utena was tough and she was popular but charismatic and personable and she was just everything. She was a fighter, she was a prince. Uh, but what she also was was naive. She didn't have a family. She didn't have common sense either, really, in some things that were going on and lack of awareness of her surroundings sometimes. Anthe, on the other hand, she lacked self-worth. She lacked bravery. She lacked honesty. She lacked a lot of things that Utena had, and they kind of ended up balancing each other. So once Utena got past the initial like disbelief that any of that was even real, then I think she started to see Anthe in a different light. So the end of the show was a complete surprise to me and I'm not gonna ruin it, but the relationship between them up until then was very believable. Something else I found fascinating about RGU was the fact that it had so many Christian themes, but at the same time, it had a lot of occultic themes mixed together. There's a lot of stuff mixed together in this show. That star, which is brighter than any of the others, that one is Venus. Oh. They call it the morning star. My name is a derivative of one of the characters of its Japanese name. Oh. Romantic name, isn't it? The morning star has another name, Lucifer. Lucifer? Lucifer, who was once an angel yet chose to be the king of hell. 
In that clip, Akio is talking about the origins of his name, but his other half, Dios, is actually about God or really Zeus. Like, there, we got a whole dark and light thing going on with that. In addition to the characters, there's also the music. The soundtrack not only bangs, but it also has a lot of biblical themes in that as well, especially the battle song. Luckily, I watched the English dub all the way through and it had really good captions but when you start to read the captions it's like what parts of the Bible is this like what are y'all talking about just y'all see Like just in that clip alone of the song is talking about Lucifer, who is a fallen angel from heaven, but the song was also talking about Nyx and Erebus and uh, Oranos and Thanatos. And those are all consorts of each other. And those are all deities of the underworld. And that is not in the Bible. So for them to be mixing the two kind of makes it a little bit confusing. But this is also why I think that Otori Academy is like an allegory for purgatory or like your own personal hell because Dios is dead. Maybe Dios was Akios' human form and he's gone now. So he is stuck in his own hell as the fallen version. And the rest of them as well are trying to revolutionize themselves, i.e. get themselves out of purgatory or get themselves out of their own personal hell. But Nyx, who is also mentioned in that song, she is a goddess of night. Like, the way that they mixed it kind of was confusing, but it makes it really interesting when you start to think about, like, all the theories and all the stuff that it could actually mean. Okay, even though this show's themes were dark, and had a lot of symbolism and a lot of layers and what have you. It was still a really funny show. And I appreciated that because it was so old. Like, since the show was almost 30 years old, I didn't expect the jokes to land the way they did. Or the personalities to be as wacky and goofy as they were. But I mean, I really enjoyed it. And on top of that, I would say it was just as funny as Psyche K, if not more. Your brother's interested in everybody, Nanami. Well, aren't we Miss Self-Sufficient USA? Oh, my brother can be such a jerk. Oh, I love hearing about people's family problems. I beg your pardon? Uh, <coughs> love can take many different forms. For example, the love Anthe and I share is hidden love. That's hidden love. Yeah, nice skirt, Seonji. I can't seem to think clearly anymore. Am I having delusions? Do I need my opinion? removed bring me a blanket someone in soon Nanami's lost it one thing that was funny about the show but really wasn't funny or maybe it wasn't supposed to be funny was how much violence was in it and I'm not talking about the regular like dueling between the student council and the sword fighting and all of that I mean like the bitch macking and fighting amongst each other like they were not playing with each other you son of a bitch hit the most was Anthe. I mean, she got smacked up multiple times by multiple people. I think the only person who stood up for her in the show was Utena. And the only time that Anthe ever stood up for herself was when her and Utena switched bodies. So after a while, it was actually kind of hard to watch. It really wasn't funny anytime Anthe got hit, but the violence was like off the chain. Uh, you little... Uh, like, Anthe, stand up. One of the worst things about the show, I hate to say, is actually all the instances of incest. There's at least three between the main cast of characters that is always like in your face. And what is even worse about that is that it is a common thing. Like, that goes on in multiple anime shows and I was hoping to not have to see it anymore. They use it as teachable moments, more so about their inner selves and their siblings being extensions of them, but I just really don't feel like it was necessary. Anthe, come here. It's 
been a week. Did you miss me? Yes, big brother. Kozue? Why are you dressed like Mickey? All right, let's begin. Right. Miss Utena? Big brother belongs to me. I won't let anyone take him. Not anyone. Big brother? You really are the only one for me. Out. Uh, uh, no! Let me go! Isn't that what you've always wanted? No. We aren't really brother and sister. That's not what I want! Then what? What is it you want? All in all, I would give RGU an 8 out of 10. The only reason why I don't tack on those last two points is because I do not expect to have to go in depth and analyze each episode to understand it. I thought like Psyche K that it was just gonna like follow a simple formula that was just gonna be like a little entertaining and that I wasn't gonna have to do too much thinking. But on the other hand, I like to think, so it did give me something to think about with every episode except for the recaps. I would recommend this show to anybody who likes old school anime. I would recommend this to anybody who likes shoujo animes. And I would recommend it to anybody who likes complex animes. I don't feel like Psyche K was as complex as this. This had a lot of heavy subject matter and a lot of things to tackle. I honestly could have discussed a lot more, but we would have been here all night. All in all, I really did love it. And I hope that you guys watch it and love it too. Thanks for watching me.